Okay, how might you explain Hanukkah to a friend who's not very familiar with the holiday? The thing about Hanukkah is that it's this incredible celebration of really persevering identity. And it all kind of touches upon a time in which Jews were not allowed to practice Judaism. And, and that opportunity to fight for our right to be ourselves. Interestingly, Hanukkah is actually considered a minor holiday in Jewish law. It doesn't have nearly all of the strict requirements that maybe some other holidays might have, like Rosh Hashanah or Yom Kippur. Yeah, I mean, the best part of Hanukkah is that you don't have to go to the temple. It's really a home-focused holiday. You gather with your family in order to share food, in order to share certain ritual practices like lighting the menorah. I mean, I think almost everyone associates Hanukkah with latkes, as you should. I personally, I like a thin, crispy, spidery web of potato that gets really brown and really crunchy. Growing up in my household, my mom would fry latkes and my sister and I would literally wait next to the stove to eat them straight from the pan and like dunk them into ice cold applesauce so our fingers wouldn't burn. I'm particularly a fan of soufganiyot, which are kind of like jelly donuts. And I can smell my mother's cooking, you know, 70 years ago. You'll find lots of people playing with dreidels, which are those lovely little spinny tops. I know it's not a traditional thing to give gifts on Hanukkah, but it's definitely something that I grew up with. But, you know, as my mother always told me when I was a kid, you know, gifts aren't really the point of Hanukkah necessarily. It's just a kind of nice added um, bonus that many children get to enjoy. We sing songs. We thank God for miracles because Hanukkah is associated with a special historical miracle. And at the Jewish Museum, we have hundreds of Hanukkah menorahs that honor that history and story and they are far ranging and they are from all over the world. So to understand what Hanukkah is, we need to go back a little bit in history. This holiday is linked to a particular period, 200 BCE, more or less. A band of rebels led by Judah Maccabee fought against the Syrian Greeks who were under the reign of King Antiochus. Antiochus actually prohibited the Jews from having the opportunity and ability to worship as they chose. Some even say that he sacrificed a pig on the altar, which is a no-no in a Jewish religion. When the temple was desecrated, the temple that was considered the centerpiece of life, political, religious life for Jews at the time in Jerusalem, they started a guerrilla warfare that eventually brought them the victory of that small area, and they could retake the temple. The story goes that when they, you know, cleaned out the temple after the pigs were in it and it was desecrated, uh, there was a menorah and um, there was enough oil, because you use olive oil typically, there was enough olive oil and they, they looked in the thing, oh, and they were like, that's only gonna burn for one day. And that is considered the miracle of Hanukkah. And Hanukkah translates to rededication because really it's, it's talking about this, this miracle that happened when we rededicated the temple um, and the oil was supposed to last one night and it lasted eight nights. And that's where this whole idea of Hanukkah being an eight-day celebration with lighting candles came about. And also we do the little nod by eating a lot of greasy food. I've always been a huge fan of the menorah. I mean, I'm a 38-year-old woman who lives in Brooklyn. I love a candle. So menorah means candelabra, like it's a general word, candelabra. It could have like two candles, it could have a lot of candles, but there's a special menorah called a Hanukkiah. And that's got eight holders and then one, usually in the middle, could be on the side, and that's called the leader, the leader candle, the shamish candle. And that is the attendant candle that you use to actually light all of the other candles that are used to celebrate the holiday. First night you light one candle, second night you light two candles, third three candles, and so on until you've lit all eight candles on the last night. 
it's this ignition of presence in a moment to talk about or, or really just even think about why we're celebrating this because everything in Judaism is symbolism. What's beautiful is often the Hanukkah menorah is displayed within the window. Because the idea is that as you're increasing this light, increasing the celebration, increasing the joy, you want it to be broadcast out to the world. There have been so many instances in history where we have not been able to celebrate openly as Jews. So this is a real opportunity to declare our Judaism kind of loud and proud. Of course, because hashtag Judaism, there are lots of rules about Hanukkah, is like when you can light it, how long you have to let the candles burn, do they all have to be in line? Yes. Does the shamash have to be in line? Not necessarily. You put the candles in from right to left, and then you light them with the shamash from left to right. Oh, you never blow the candles out. Because why would you blow them? The miracle is that they lasted, lasted, lasted. So it's always a sense of continuity, continuity, until they finish. The menorah is the best thing to have. When I had almost nothing, like in my apartment, just like as like a 25 year old or a 30 year old, as I was building a home for myself, I always had menorahs. I think it's this really special and like very identifiable thing that is both celebratory of Judaism and recognizable of Judaism. I don't have a ton of Judaica that was saved from pre-war Europe. My family just unfortunately lost a lot of that. So to be able to start a collection myself in my household with my husband and create what we will then begin to pass down is really special. The Hanukkah also is one of the ways that for thousands of years, Jews have expressed our artistic nature because Hanukkahs can be very plain or they can be very elaborate. It really speaks to the diaspora of the Jewish people and the exciting mix of influences of design and art and culture, whether it's from India or Australia or Amsterdam. And that's a kind of miracle of its own, how the old object, which is simple, has allowed for this artistic creativity in every single community. We have a very, very special Hanukkah lamp here. It's a 19th century item for a community in Morocco, which will tell you immediately that this has influence from Islamic art. The florets that you see attached to it, you see them lined up in two lines. The top one is little birds looking up to the sky, love birds in this case. And the little ones are fish looking down. We think it was a wedding gift to a new couple and wishing them proliferation, children in the future is something that was brought in into a Hanukkah lamp as an extra a special item for that family. Here we see Peter Shire's menorah number no. seven. Often when we look at this piece with children, they're drawn to the colors and forms, the mix of materials, and then they start to see the different holes within the blocks or these candle holder forms. And then here, this shamash. In this piece, art, design, and function are having a playful and kind of humorous conversation about the holiday. The Minerki is a menorah in the shape of a turkey that I came up with as a nine-year-old entering the fourth grade kid. My brother and I were bickering as we do, and my mom, in a desperate attempt to distract us, told us that the next year Hanukkah and Thanksgiving would be on the same day. My nine-year-old brain goes ding, ding, ding. There's two shapes that can be meshed together. So I said menorah in the shape of a turkey, call it the minerki. My parents were into that and thankfully let me run with it. We had a Kickstarter campaign and People seem to be really into it. So we had them made in New York and it's now in the permanent collection of the Jewish Museum. I didn't really fully process how large it had gotten until I was much older, but I do think the fact that so many people were able to connect with it is kind of indicative of how there can be an object and holidays that unite us despite distances and other boundaries. 
I have two pieces in the Jewish Museum. One is a menorah. The other part consists of eight variations of a menorah-like form constructed out of steel, with each piece representing an entirely different approach to assembling and playing with space. I grew up in Israel. When you grow up in Israel, uh, menorahs are everywhere. I mean, that's just part of the culture. One of the things that I was thinking about, and I think about it a lot, is this notion of what was it that made Jews survive all these years without being assimilated and totally getting lost. My sense is that these kinds of rituals that kind of permeate being Jewish are the things that really sort of carried us through. On some level, there's a kind of a really interesting continuity, even though the menorah changes, materials change, technology changes, styles change, all of that changes. There's some really basic kind of ideas that kind of get transmitted from generation to generation. It's a wonderful holiday, it really is. And um, mostly I'm thinking about latkes right now. <laughs>